Sacramento did their job defending home court, taking a 2-0 series lead over the defending champion Warriors. The storylines in this series have been more than up to par with the on-court product, and a major one for the Kings has been the offensive explosion of Malik Monk. Every single time Monk steps on the floor, his energy level is dialed up to 1000%, looking to get out and run every single chance he gets. As soon as he touches the ball, he puts his head down, fires up the Jets, and there's just no stopping him from getting all the way to the cup. This is made possible by his incredible athleticism. He's one of the fastest players in the league with really good body control and balance, and it doesn't take him long to get to that top speed, showing serious explosiveness both on the ground and when launching off the floor for a 42-inch vertical. Even when he's not the one pushing, he's always ready to leak out after missed shots or turnovers, commonly beating the entire defense down the floor like a wide receiver. He's a real athletic finisher, often scoring off of dives to the basket, and does a good job of setting himself up to play off the catch, where he can either put it down for quick drives or pull for transition threes. That combination of explosive athleticism and three-point shooting are also the basis for his attack in the half court. He spends most of his time away from the ball, where he's an active mover and multifaceted threat. Over the last three seasons, he's hit 40% of his threes off the catch, and in these looks, there's some solid versatility. He can hit from extended range, with a hand in his grill, and even has some movement in there. Which is important because instead of staying stationary without the ball, he's constantly relocating and running off of screens to find sweeter spots in the defense. In that same three year time span, he's hit a scorching 43% of his wide open threes, showing that he demands real attention on the perimeter. And that threat, when paired with his explosiveness, allows him to make some real sharp cuts to the basket. Here, Trey Murphy's fronting him off a pin down to not let him go and get the ball, so instead of using the screen, he jukes back door where nobody's in position to take away a lob. He also just has a real high feel for where to float or position himself, recognizing that Austin Rivers is in a two-on-one situation and diving into the lane for a quick catch and finish. This constant activity helps create much easier driving lanes. Watch as he moves all the way to the corner to make himself an available target and draw a longer closeout, before putting it down for a tough reverse lay. He's not really a guy who can consistently break down defenses from a standstill. He's got a limited handle and lacks both the strength and length to generate easy looks for himself. But with a little movement, or off the catch against a rotating defense, he's absolutely lethal. He's a super quick decision maker. Instead of pounding the ball into the floor, he's always looking to attack or move it to the next player, which allows him to play so well off of a heavier shot creator like De'Aaron Fox, who can bend the defense out of position for those more advantageous downhill attacks. From these spots, Monk gets a ton of paint touches, where he'll convert on some pretty tough finishes. His aerial balance is special, going airborne to get the ball up over shot blockers, although I do think he sometimes has a tendency to launch himself into impossibly tough angles. In just one dribble, he beats Christy downhill with ease, but instead of using that space in the paint to take an extra bounce and set himself up for an easier look, he takes off for a much harder scoop lay. Some of this is just awkward footwork. He would much rather jump off of two feet than one and can sometimes struggle gauging where it is he should take off. But he also sometimes makes these impossibly tough shots in the paint, which leads to some pretty impressive highlight reels. He also has a pretty nice float game he can go to from a touch further, and as the season has progressed, gotten a lot better at seeking out contact, which was especially notable in Game 1 when he attempted 14 free throws. 
Primarily though, on these attacks he's looking to draw in the defense and create for others. His biggest stride forward as an offensive player over the past couple of seasons has been developing into a strong downhill passer. Again it starts with off ball movement, coming off a corner screening action that gives him space to drive, making three different defenders leave their feet before dropping it off to a big man. Here's another example where he's coming off a pin down into a potential dribble handoff, but instead rejects that action and goes baseline, where he draws attention at the rim and throws a beautiful mid-air kick out with his off hand to a warm up 3 point jumper. If we take a look at some of his driving data, you'll notice he creates opportunities at the rim at a high rate, but instead of converting as a finisher, he's a lot better at leveraging that threat into shots for others, actually leading the entire NBA in assist rate out of drives. And the reason teammates score so consistently as a product of his playmaking is because almost 53% of his assists end in shots at the rim, the most efficient spot on the floor. After beating the first line of defense and being met with help, many offensive players see this open shooter and instinctively kick it to the corner, but Monk sees a free two points. As Fox attacks in the high pick and roll, Monk's man roams over to the nail to take away a left hand drive, so when the ball gets swung, it's a longer recovery and easy drive, collapsing the defense for a lay down to Sabonis. He just reads the interior so well, finding impossibly small gaps to sneak the ball through, and he's real creative, comfortable going to a wide array of deliveries to create these looks, this time trailing the play, burning a closeout, and shoveling it through traffic for an Alex Len dunk. While he's at his best playing off the catch and attacking with a bit more chaos, of course there are still times where offense runs through him. But before we get into that, I want to give a quick shout out to Basketball Index for helping with this analysis. If you're not familiar with the site, they provide tons of statistical measurements, tools, and easily accessible graphics to further guide your understanding of the sport. I earlier mentioned a few of their talent grades, and through their player profiles tab, I can easily compare them to other players around the league. Using Monk's finishing as an example, on this page I'm presented with various metrics detailing his ability to create and make these shots, along with how he stacks up against his peers. By signing up with the code VENUE30, you can get 30% off your first month subscription, so I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone interested. And with that being said, let's take a look at Monk's abilities as a creator. In an offense that runs more dribble handoffs than any other team ever, he's a pretty huge weapon to have. He first looks to catch his man off guard with a backdoor cut, and when nothing comes of that, he cuts back to the ball, where there's a lane available for him to sneak into a tough finish. This time he comes off a screen and his man goes under, so he swings back in the opposite direction, forcing Aiton to play at the level opening up an offhand bounce pass that's right on the money. Here's another one where he first looks to cut back door before coming to get the ball, which helps him get the step on his man, drawing a tag from the corner that he counters with a hook pass to create a great look from deep. In a more traditional pick and roll setup, he's comfortable stepping into pull up jumpers when they're given to him, but doesn't settle often constantly looking to get to that painted area and make something happen. Because of that explosiveness, he's a huge threat to reject screens if coverages aren't executed properly, burning Highland off the bounce and having that space to take off where his incredible mid-air balance does the rest. As we've seen on multiple occasions now, he also has that element of unpredictability and is capable of catching fire at any moment. He'll make some real tough shots and just has an unmatched confidence level in getting these off from all three levels, which can at times be to his own detriment, but also puts him in position to completely take over a game. And that's what being a spark plug is about. Having complementary offensive skills that allow you to bring value next to the team's heavy drivers with that switch always ready to flip, and Malik Monk embodies this role better than any other player in the league today. 
If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Monk and just how good you believe he is. As always, I hope you all have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.